It was early last year when young mother Natasia Lewis uh, decided no, no. to get a tummy tuck and breast lift. That's that how she landed inside Benita's Divino Plastic Surgery Center with Dr. Carlos Chacon, who's now the target of a new lawsuit she's bringing against him for medical negligence. He spent a good two hours of telling me how he was number one in the nation. Lewis, who works as an ICU nurse, said she researched him and other surgeons, but chose Dr. Chacon despite the dollar amount for the procedure. 25,000. But a couple of weeks after going under the knife, she said that an incision in her stomach wouldn't close. So I was going in three times a week, and every time I would go in, he would cut more and cut more and cut more. During an office visit this January for a revision surgery, she says someone in the office told her this. The girl kind of whispers to me and says, I need you to not come back. I go get in the car and I'm like, what was she talking about? So I Google and the case finally pops up. The involuntary manslaughter case. Dr. Chacon and nurse Heather Lang were criminally charged in December with involuntary manslaughter for their alleged role in this young woman's 2018 botched surgery and death. Even though the patient died more than three years ago, nothing about it was available for the public to view on the state medical board's website until the charges were filed four months ago. Both the surgeon and nurse are allowed to keep practicing without notifying patients. That's California law. At any point, did he say, I have been criminally charged with involuntary manslaughter? No. I would have had, I would have had so much more respect for that. This is the formal accusation by the state medical board that was made public in December. According to the report, Dr. Jacone didn't tell the patient that there wouldn't be an anesthesiologist present, and the nurse who sedated her reportedly wasn't adequately trained to do so. A couple of hours into the surgery, she reportedly went into cardiac arrest and interventions like CPR began. Instead of calling 911, the report states that Dr. Jacone called two anesthesiologists he worked with for advice, but allegedly concealed how life-threatening her situation was. He reportedly didn't call 911 even as she started to make gurgling noises and exhibit seizure-like activity. Medics were finally called more than three hours after CPR and later indicated they were in disbelief it took that long to make the call. She was found to be brain dead at the hospital where she died five weeks later. Dr. Jacone and his nurse have pleaded not guilty. That patient's family has filed a lawsuit. Dr. Chacon's attorney previously wrote that he is aggressively defending himself in this case. Lang's attorney explained that they cannot comment because of the ongoing litigation. The DA's office and the Medical Board of California have not commented on why it took three years to file charges and publish an accusation, citing that this is a pending case. In December, the medical board requested a court order for Dr. Chacon to cease practice pending the outcome of the criminal charges. But the hearing has been pushed back from March to July. Until then, he and the nurse can practice, with some limitations, like only performing surgeries with a licensed anesthesiologist or a certified registered nurse anesthetist present. Last month, Central California State Senator Melissa Hurtado watched our story. I think that, you know, Things need to change drastically. And a prominent patient safety advocate told us this. It's time finally for the state of California to prioritize protecting patients over protecting the livelihood of doctors. Her group is pushing for legislative reforms to increase transparency, like expanding disclosure on the medical board's website to include pending investigations if the doctor's conduct resulted in serious harm or death. Her death happened more than three years ago. You saw him last year. <laughs> yeah, and January. January of this year, I was still completely clueless of it. She is hoping that no other patients will have to go through pain and suffering. I've got a hole in the middle of my stomach. I've lost my belly button. This isn't what I signed up for. And we have reached out to the doctor's attorney about this new lawsuit. We are waiting to hear back. Reporting in the studio tonight, Jennifer Kastner, ABC 10 News. Important reporting, Jennifer. Thank you. And while lawmakers and advocates are pushing for more transparency, there are still ways to look into your doctor and see whether they faced any disciplinary actions before. We've got more info and a link to that tool on 10news.com. Just look for the Resource Center at the top of the homepage.